Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I am joined alongside my co-host, my partner in crime, Derek Ciapala. A little bit different. I, this is, for those who have been around for all of Talking Halos, I think we said it's been three and a half, four years now of doing, doing Talking Halos. Um, this is the man. This is the man, the myth, the legend. This is the guy who started it all, who um, trusted me with his baby. And um, yeah, it's, it's been an absolute last i i'm just i'm happy that from the beginning you uh you asked me to jump on and i i actually you know jumped on and did this you know because this is this is an absolute blast i love this i absolutely do so just thanks for trusting me with your baby <laughs> well, you're welcome and you ran with it you know in a, a couple of years where it's been 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 tough going especially with um really hitting with covid and everything life's just changed dramatically on my end for a while so you know i said okay go for it and you did You've got this on YouTube now, and there's, you get a nice set of listeners there. We have a podcast growing. And most importantly, my big goal has always been to make sure there's more attention on the Angels. Like, you, you can go anywhere in L.A. There's a gajillion podcasts on the Dodgers. And when we started this bad boy up, it was maybe two podcasts. There's, there's more now, which, in my view, I welcome the competition. It, I think, in my view, the more Angels podcasts, the better. because then we can hopefully beat them. <laughs> that's, that's always my goal is to beat them. But, um, you know, it's been an interesting time, and I'm glad to be back and, and getting into it. And, and we have some big stuff to talk about, there, don't we? Yes, absolutely we do. We got the Justin Upton stuff. But uh, but first, you know, can, first, I, I mean, since we're here talking, congratulations on the uh, Super Bowl, man. That's fantastic. I know. I mean, that's all, I, That's just something. I, we've, I think we've mentioned it for a week straight here um, on Talking Halo. It's just saying congratulations to, to the sister podcast here. Um, but, I mean, throw all that out for all the Rams fans on here because I don't know if anybody really knows that there is a sister, sister, sister podcast. Older brother, I guess, is what you can call it. To uh, I would to, call it older brother. Older brother podcast. Yeah. So the, the Rams Talk Radio, we have two podcasts on the Rams Talk Radio and then butting heads with, with our other guy, Stephen Johnny. And, and uh, we've been covering that. We just finished our seventh season, if I'm correct. Yep, 2016, yeah, seventh season covering them all via podcast. And we have now been uh, 10 years, I believe, almost nine or 10 years for covering overall. And it's been a really neat ride for that. And, and by the way, by the way, there's nothing in my eye that says the Angels can't go do anything this year either. I know a lot of people think are hard on the Angels, but I actually like the direction they're going in. I uh, get kind of get an idea where Parmenasian has been. Uh, did I say that right? Manassian. Yeah. Manassian, Manassian. I still don't know, but you're in the area. You're in the okay. right area. Uh, I do. You can kind of get a vision of it. And I even a couple years later, I kind of feel bad at how things went for the previous regime and we defended him a lot, but I do, you can kind of see a vision of it now. And they went out there and got themselves a nice bullpen this off season. Uh, you know, we're going to have just enough in a minute. And in my view, I, I'm I'm sorry, Jared. I don't understand the, what the big freak out is over uh, DFAing Justin Upton. I honestly don't. Yeah, no, I, I'm 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 right on there with you guys with with you on that. I have I I like to play devil's advocate, and I know a lot of our followers and listeners of this podcast hate that I play devil's ad, advocate in a reason, in a sense, and I I look at it from both sides. Um, but this is one of those times where I. I understand both sides and I know I, there's sometimes where you, a lot of people just don't understand both sides of what's going on, but I thoroughly understand like all angles of this. I don't, the one thing I don't understand is why in a sense it's happening, but I do understand like all angles of it minus the why, which I guess is probably the big, the big part in this whole thing. But, um, but first, before we get on to, to talking Justin Upton, cause that's, basically what we want to talk about that's the biggest news that's probably some of the biggest news in in baseball i think uh, minus opening day this week uh and and such like that but justin upton is the biggest news but before we go before we get there guys just want to thank you all so much for listening to this podcast and watching us if you're on if you're on youtube watching us it's been fantastic and we got a lot of um probably some some good changes coming on onto youtube with Derek coming back on um can we were talking about and I, I like being completely honest. We're talking about just like doing the bare minimum on YouTube. We want to really jump in and, and get this going on YouTube because we we got something special special cooking here with Talking Halos. I, I we all think we do, and it's it's an absolute blast. But again, subscribe um, wherever you're listening or watching this podcast. Hit the bell. I think is what they say on YouTube. We're working on we're working on YouTube lingo um, in a sense. I'm not the best. We're not the best with that, but we're working on it. And um, again, 
you can follow us on all our social medias, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, you can follow myself at Jared underscore Tim's on Twitter. You can follow Derek at DC Apollo. Mm-hmm. Right. Took me, uh, took me a couple episodes to figure out to remember John's, but, uh, but I will remember yours. So DC Apollo, if you don't follow him already, go do that. And for Ram stuff too, especially, um, they do a fantastic job with that, but yeah, let's, um, let's jump right into this whole Justin Upton thing. Cause it is, it's crazy. <laughs> it's something that I don't think anybody expected, uh, unless you really, really thought about it. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I don't think anybody really expected it, but again, I expected it, but didn't expect it. Is that, is that so weird to say? Like when you look at it, it's like, oh, that makes sense that they, that they let him go. But I also thought that they were going to, like, I thought that it was going to be a legit platoon situation at first base. Like Justin Upton's numbers last year at, against left-handed hitters are uh, like a hundred points higher in every category uh, than Jared Walsh against lefties. And that worries me a lot, but you also can, you also can throw different guys in there. Like I know Matt Duffy can play a little first. I know Taylor Ward can play a little bit at first. So if you don't, if you still want to platoon at first base, you can, you can do that. And Justin Upton, you know, doesn't have to be there. And you also have that. You also have the side of things where you now have the kids in the outfield with Mike Trout, who I think is still a kid in a sense. Um, you, you have all three of those guys that can play the outfield. Plus I think Taylor Ward will probably play the outfield a lot as well as that fourth outfielder. Um, and that's what Angel fans have been calling for for the longest time is uh, Trout, Adele, and Marsh in the outfield. Um, so I just, you know, it's so, I don't know. I, th- I think a lot of people, you know, are shocked by this, but at the same time, it's not that shocking. I know that's super weird again to say, but what, what are your thoughts on this, Derek? I was absolutely not surprised at all. And I was more surprised. Okay, well, if I'm not – well, let me rephrase that. I was absolutely not surprised at all, which would say then, therefore, when people start flipping out about it, that's when I was surprised. I, I'm going to go back a couple of years when he first got hurt, and I was, I was one of the people who defended him. I, people were hammering him left and right, talking about, you know, we should be playing better, and I'm sitting there going, dude, you, you, you have no idea how bad, you know, turf injuries mess with your swing, mess with everything, and so on and so forth. But as time went on and you start seeing the numbers, you start seeing his numbers. You, you you have to do something here. 2019 hitting 215, 204 in 2020, 211 in 2021. Had a couple of nice moments, uh, but you can't be on a major league roster at your age, age 34, and hitting basically an average around 208 in the last three years. You just can't do it. 208, 209. I'm, I'm not doing the math right now. You you. I know people minimize a little batting average, this, this, and this. Well, it's not like he was getting on base either. It's not like he was really, in my view, even playing a lot of games. He played in the last three years, 162, one, you know, what, what, once two, 60 games in, in 2020. And um, was it two? He only played 100, not less than 200 games mm-hmm. the last three years. Two years in 2019, 2021, at 63 and 89. You can't count on him at this point. You just can't. And I, I don't care how good of a spring he's having. I don't care how much you pay him. You've got guys now who are ready and who need at bats. So that's why we're talking about Jared Walsh and being concerned about who's – he hit 100, you know, 100 points higher against lefties. Well, then in my view, if Jared Walsh is your guy, he needs to get bats to face those lefties. Yeah. At this point, you, you have to roll the dice on the guys you've got who are your future. And – it was to me clear that Upton wasn't coming back next year. They weren't going to re-sign him to a long-term extension next year. Even if he took a massive pay cut, it was time to cut the cord. And I, I look at it also and for the fact that, again, he was brought in as a power guy. 17 home runs last year in 89 games is high power. 89 games, sure, but still 211. It, it was a justifiable release. Mm-hmm. You've got other guys you want to give time to. And I don't think that platooning was going to help him out either. He wants to play full time and, and hopefully somebody will, will give him a shot. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, like I said, I, I want to understand it. I worry in the back of my head also about what happened last year with the Albert Pujols thing and moving forward too, and angels trying and angels trying to sign guys in the future. And they're like, well, what happens if 
I turn into the Albert Pujols? What if it happens if I turn into that Justin Upton type guy? And I know it, at the end of the day, it comes down to, well, you know, you look at it and it's like, well, don't turn into those guys, you know, don't, uh, you know, don't put up bad numbers like these guys did in a sense, you know, like try to stay healthy as best as we can, you know, you know, at the, at the end of the day, but I worry that, you know, those conversations now happen in the off season with trying to sign guys. And it's like, well, you did this with Albert Pujols and you did this with Justin Upton. Like why am, what makes me any different? And like now, I mean, fans want Anthony Rendon's head as well because he's been hurt for two years. And it seems like he's kind of on that train now too with the injuries and not playing that much. And we'll see moving forward. But like, you kind of get what I'm saying here, right? Like it just, it, I feel I like it's a bad do, look. I, well, I'm not worried about the look as much as, you know, both these guys were in their last year of the contracts. Both weren't playing up to the contract. With, with Rendon, I think it's a different situation. I think his attitude hasn't been great about it at all, by the way. I think his attitude has been, eh. You deserve the criticism, dude. You, you mean, in terms of honest criticism, have you played well since you've been here? No. Have you been hurt since you've been here? Yes. Should you be criticized for being hurt? No. But when you're on the field, you know, there, there's, a, there's a place to be. And kind of blowing off fan concerns about it is, is not, in my view, helping Rendon at all. Rendon is a, is a grown man who needs to own where he, what he can own. But when you look at Albert Pujols, and I think you brought you bringing Albert Pujols into it's a great thing because – we got to understand something. Usually when the angels make one of these decisions, it's for the right reason. And I go back to last year and people were like, well, well, Pujols played better. when We went to play with the Dodgers. That's true. That's true. He put his best batting average since 2016 in limited time with the Dodgers. So then the question was, why was he doing LA? Maybe just maybe since he got a world series out of it, you know, maybe just maybe. Oh, no, he didn't actually. Did um, playoffs. My years up. Playoffs. I guess playoffs out of it. Playoffs. But maybe he needed a place, needed a change too. Maybe it wasn't just the Angels who needed a change. But again, you have Jared Walsh there. And if Albert Pujols is in LA last year, all year with the Angels, if he's in Anaheim with them, then Walsh is looking over his shoulder have to share playing time with them when they wanted Walshy playing. Now, Walshy played himself into Pujols' release. That's what he did. Absolutely. And I look at Pujols' contract and think, when did he actually earn the money he made? When's the last time he did? And <sighs> my, defense, my defense for Pujols always is that what he doesn't do on the field he does behind the scenes. And I, that's always been my defense. I know it's, that's not worth 20 something million dollars that he was getting paid or $250 million. But like my defense has always been like, look who stands next to Albert Pujols when the national anthem's going on. It's always Mike Trout, you know, like not saying that Mike Trout or that Albert Pujols created Mike Trout um, or anything like that. But like they, there's something going on behind the scenes with Albert Pujols, a leadership standpoint. Um, that's always been my my thing with with AP and he's also a very good he's he should be a very good recruiter for bringing guys in internationally I think um and I don't think the Angels took very good advantage of that um in a sense but looking at from a, a winning standpoint oh exactly 100 okay, yeah. for a winning standpoint yeah. for all the influence you'd say you'd have with the locker room where's his team been the last six years exactly I mean they haven't been in place of 2015 his best average year in since being an angel was what? His first year, 285, mm -hmm. 272, 268. Again, talking batting averages alone, but we look at on base percentage, and the guy's barely been over 300 once. Home runs, you're bringing average, you know, it's about production. And his war, for example, last year, a war of minus 0.1. Didn't do much for the Dodgers, by the way. So I look at it and go, okay, the Angels are taking major criticism now, twice, two years in a row, for releasing veterans who weren't living up to the contract and essentially making room for players who they want to ensure get playing time. And we also missed the other side of this too. By releasing these guys, you're paying them. They're still getting their money. 
and they're getting a chance to sign somewhere where they will be used. So what's the problem? Well, they should be here. To do what? To do what? To be hit 211 with, with 17 home runs and get an injury half through the year again for Albert Pujols last year to, in the end, have 17 total home runs, 110 games, but he hits 236 total combined. And most of that was with the Dodgers, not with the Angels. What are you doing? I, yeah, no, I, 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 I get that. I worry about him going, Justin Upton in particular, going somewhere and like actually doing something because there is, there is still something there. There is still value there. There is still being a, play, a good player there. And same thing with Pujols. Like Pujols, Pujols was put in the situation in LA with the Dodgers that he should have been put in with the Angels, like as that platoon guy at batting against lefties at first base. You know, like that's what Pool should have been. I know that that and like. So why look, didn't he? Well, you well exactly why why didn't he? That's what worries me. You know, like why didn't the Angels like he he uh, Pool said I want to go start somewhere. I want to go start somewhere. Okay, that's fine. He went to L.A. and he didn't. He was in the same position as what he should have been in with the Angels. But you know, he like, was that with the Angels. That's the that's my point. Why didn't They're they? Saying, use, why didn't they use him in that situation? They they did. They did. He said he said he didn't want to though. He said he wanted to go and find a there place we to go. start. So he wanted to go somewhere to start. Here's, here's, here's what probably happened. Honestly, here's what happened. He, it, we kept hearing the grumblings, right? We kept hearing all the little grumblings going through in the rumors and you know, that he wasn't happy and the angels weren't happy. And, you know, and, and of course, how, I mean, if you're the angels or Pujols, that's just not a good situation anymore. But he, he wants to play more. And we see them platooning him. Two things happen. Walsh is tearing the cover of the ball off the ball at that point. And two, Albert doesn't want to doesn't doesn't want to platoon. He's saying that, so he gets his wish. They they designate him first, and they let him go. Okay, and then what? He goes to the Dodgers and platoons. Yeah, but in between that, when he's cut, what we don't know, but you can kind of read between the lines here, is if somebody wanted him to start, wanted to pay him to start, especially a contender. That, that they would have been there. There, there were numerous teams out there that needed somebody who could hit for, hit for power. Numerous teams. Yeah. And the Angels were paying his, his bill. He could have gone to a couple different places. They didn't, nobody wanted him unless he was willing to do what? Be that platoon him. guy. <laughs> and so there he goes to the Dodgers. That's probably what happened. And in the end, that talks about the actual demand for Albert Pujols. You can't tell me he wouldn't have signed for another contender if he wouldn't have been playing every day because the guy made it known he wanted to play every day, but he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. If there's not, so, I mean, back onto the Justin Upton standpoint and, and what you bring up, if there aren't, I wouldn't say 29 teams because not 29 teams don't need a DH. You look at the NLs, all, like you're telling me like Pittsburgh's not in on him at league minimum salary, like Pitts, like someone's got to be in. So he, I mean, he can obviously, pick where he wants to go in a sense because angels are will end up releasing him or, or or trading him i think he can still technically be traded at this point um but but yeah if there aren't 29 teams technically in on on justin upton it's um it's it's weird for me i think again there's still something there i've been the biggest i've been one of the biggest um believers in justin upton i know you know nate hasn't who's also with us here talking halos hasn't been and he's always tried to talk me out of it but it's just like I, like I said, I, I just find this whole situation to be very tough, and I worry about things in the future when it comes down to it. That's well, that, your, that's where I worry. Here's my here's my thing. Mm. Okay, there is to me a parallel here. The, bringing Albert Pujols in the conversation has a lot of, of interesting parallels. When you look at Albert Pujols' swing before he became the Angels, as the leg injury started to come up, started to like started to really mess with him because his swing isn't the same swing anymore and you have to put that on the injuries right there's holes in his swing that's why his average is down the guy was a over 300 he hit a hitter when he came to the angels right by far by the way he but he's never he never hit 300 with the angels the same would go for jared upton justin upton bad day okay for justin upton okay look at his averages coming over previous years 300, 273, 289, 280, 263 in Atlanta, 270 for Atlanta. Um, and then in 2015, you see a shift, 251, 246, 
2017, he gets back up to 273. But Ben back to the Angels, 257, 2018. 2014, 2015, you see a shift. You see the leg injury in 2019. He's never even been close to 257 again. The same thing. Leg injuries, they are hard to overcome for older veterans when it changes how they move, how they can sit in the box. And there to me is the parallel. That's where things change. When you get when you get these leg injuries, they they mess with things. And I don't know that he'll ever get his swing, but he's never going to be as limber as he was. He's never going to move like he moved before. And so he probably still has all the same power he had. But he was never a good, he was never a high average here to begin with. So what's going to suffer the most? The average. And if if the average is suffering, you're not, you're not going to make contact as much. And there you go. I'm sure he still has that 30, 35 home run power, man. I'm sure he does. But in the end, if you aren't hitting the ball, if you're swinging it right, how are you going to do it? It's fair. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, um, like I said, I, I, I don't worry about it as much on, on the field, you know, just because Justin Upton hasn't produced. I mean, you look at it in those last three years and he, he hasn't. I mean, what has he played? You have the numbers up. He's played the, at most 74 games. 68 games? 89 games last year. 89, was it? Okay. Hitting, yeah, that's even worse in my view. 89 games, still only hit 211. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, like I said, at the end of the day, I, get, I totally understand why. But I do also not understand why. Like, it, like, I'm trying to look at it at every single angle, and I know this is going to sound completely extremely confusing, but, like, I do understand why, but I don't understand why at the same time. Like, I'm very indifferent with this whole thing. I'm with – I think a lot, of, a lot of people on social media, a lot of people – didn't quite understand it, but at again, at the end of the day, it was the right move. I know I'm super impartial here. I know I'm right, like all over the place right now. Well, I think you, I think I mean I'm gonna kind of put your your feet in the fire here. You got you kind of need to to, to make a decision on how you how you feel about this. Take a side here because you know you're questioning you know the Angels' ability based off of these signings to attract other free agents with this, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I I think it. I'm going, to look, I'm going to take a different point of view. And I think it depends on, on the player and how they're looking at it. But honestly, if you are a free agent coming over here, you're learning by these decisions in the last two years that the Angels aren't afraid to let you go if you aren't living up to your deal. And that's, and that's a sign that they are committed to winning. How much criticism do we hear uh, about Artie Moreno the ownership team about the you know the front office about do they really want to win? I think their willingness to let these guys go and still pay them in order to try and find what works in the field is more telling to me that they are they will do what it takes even if it means breaking some hearts. If I'm a player whose mind is set on winning, I don't know that that bothers me that they cut some dude because if you if you're playing for that team and somebody's not producing and you have a teammate who can you think can step in and produce inside you're probably thinking man they gotta let this guy go you can't tell me at some point in there that fans even you and me have thought man it might be time to let justin go at some point in the last couple of years it might be time to let albert go i i was i wasn't surprised albert was let go i thought it would come sooner I was surprised he was even made that he was even on the team starting last year. Yeah. I, I just look at it differently. If you're a free agent and you're committed to winning and you see the team willing to make tough decisions, you understand right off the bat that they're serious. I, that's the kind of organization I want to play for one that's serious. It's not like, it's not like he's not getting paid. He's getting his money. The, the way that I look at it, and I'm, this is going to be my thoughts here on this before we before I let everybody go, everybody go, but the way that I look at it is this is – Perry's team now you know this isn't Artie's mm-hmm. team at the moment this is Perry's team you know Artie Artie doesn't have any decisions right now and this was where we were with with Billy Epler at one point this is where we were with Jerry Jerry Depoto at one point you know um I, I feel like before the Jerry Depoto era I think it was a little bit different um than where it happened what happened after the Depoto era I don't know what changed in Artie Moreno's sense but for the time being this year at least this is Perry Manassian's team. This isn't. This is not Artie's team, even though he owns the team. This is not Artie's team. This is not John Carpino's team. This is Perry's team. Perry is making the decisions. Perry and Joe, obviously, 
Um, but this is their team. You know, Artie's not stepping in. Artie's already at the moment is taking a step back. Now talk to me in July, and if the Angels are 20 games under 500, this could be Artie's team again. Because we've seen it happen before. You know, like this, Artie, Artie steps in and makes decisions. He does. And, and sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's bad. You know, but at the moment, this is Perry's team. And that's a very good sign, I'll say. When you have somebody who knows baseball and, you know, that's what he's done is baseball <laughs> controlling the team rather than the owner controlling the team, that is a very good thing for the time being, that is saying. As long as Artie doesn't step in and make any of these Luis Renifo decisions like he did a few years ago with that trade that, you know, he nixed off with uh, Jock Peterson and, and Ross Stripling, as long as he doesn't step in and make any of these decisions. And of course, at the end of the day, the, the one thing that I've learned and taken with me when it comes to angels baseball and baseball in particular is Artie gets what Artie wants because he owns the team, <laughs> you know, but for the time being, this is Perry's team, which is a very good thing. I think. So that's my final thoughts. I don't know if you have any yeah. final thoughts for that. I mean, I think of it when, you call, when you're talking about Artie Moreno, you know, I was really, really disappointed. And it really changed my point of view when he nixed that trade. And we all know it was him who did it. We know he wrecked it. In the end, the, the Angels may have been better off. It didn't work out because Ross Stripling has pitched well since then. And, and Jock Peterson hasn't been great either. And so it may have worked out. But – I look at that Perry actually has in some way earned Artie's respect to where Artie isn't interfering. So Artie is staying out of it. And that's a good thing. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a really good thing. So to close, I would say sooner or later, Justin Neptune has gone. Sooner or later, Albert Pujols is going to be gone. Most of us couldn't wait until his payroll was off the books. And the same I feel next year, because now the Angels go out there and get somebody else they want next year for Justin Upton. In the meantime, this organization has players that we've been high on for a long time that now have a chance to play without looking over their shoulder. They're young and they're hungry. They have made the playoffs in a long time. And I, that's why I think this team has a has a better chance than most people think that they're going to be good this year. I don't know. I mean, you, I haven't heard your predictions yet. And I, I and this is the most conflicted I've been about the Angels team because we, we really have a kind of a disjointed off season. But when I look at the roster, especially with that rebuilt bullpen, which looks pretty solid. And I think of what happened last year, the, the Angels lost a lot of games in late innings. They lost. They need their bullpen in the last couple of years has been worn down and beaten up, and many times not lived up, lived up to their potential. And here you have a bullpen that's been rebuilt, looks very good, and that's going to win some games for you more than we thought they, that would be out there. And that's why I'm higher on this team than most people think, especially with Oakland down. And I think Houston's going to be down a little more this year. I thought that last year and they surprised me, but I think they will be down some this year. There is opportunity there for the Angels to make playoffs. There is an opportunity for them to win 90 games. Maybe more, maybe a little less. I don't know. But I'm looking at it as in you have young guys now. Marsh, Walsh, Adele. This yeah, is their time. Let's ride them and see what happens. And then if they don't work out, you know you're going to have money off the books here this offseason to spend. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. When it comes to predictions, uh, for those of you watching and listening, That'll happen opening day for you guys. We got to be good podcast. I'm not going to name drop anybody yet, but uh, we got a good one for you guys. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I'm fully with you there. Uh, I mean, if I could backtrack a little bit here as well on my, you know, just my final thought here. Um, Billy had his year. You look at it, that's when he brought in Osmus. That was Billy's. Billy had his year to do his thing. Uh, Jerry had his, his time to do his thing uh, with the Angels before Artie stepped in and, and kind of nixed everything. Um, same thing with Billy, you know, you look after that and already brought in Joe, which again, not a bad thing to bring in uh, one of the best managers in in baseball and probably, a, you know, one of the better managers in baseball history. But um, this is Perry's year. I've been saying that for a while. Like you look at it, this is Perry's team. This is Perry and Joe's team because Joe has a say. This is this is their team to go do what they want. And um, and the West is wild. <laughs> it's a wild, wild West. Actually, the AL in general is wild. Like I've been saying this for a while. You don't you can't pick a team. 
There isn't, there isn't one team that it's like minus the Baltimore Orioles probably, you know, but there isn't one team that it's like, you know, that team isn't, isn't going to be in it. You know, everybody in the AL minus the Baltimore Orioles are going to be in the mix to some degree in, in the playoffs, especially with expanded playoffs, even and Oakland. The Orioles. And by the way, the Orioles are far away. Yeah. No, the Orioles aren't, you know, you look at who they're bringing up with uh, two of the mm-hmm. top prospects in baseball and Adley Rushman and Grayson Rodriguez isn't too far behind him. It's like the, the, the AL is wild as can be. You don't know what's going to happen in the East. You don't know what's going to happen in the central and, and the West is going to be sure as hell fun as well. So guys, again, just want to thank you all so much for listening and watching this podcast here at talking halo. Super glad to have Derek back on. Uh, at least once a, le- a week, maybe more, hopefully. Uh, I, like I said, I'm excited for what we have working here this, uh, this season at Talking Halos. It's going to be an absolute blast. Looking forward to, to baseball season starting, happening opening day week this week. Again, subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to it. Follow us on all of our social medias, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can follow myself on Twitter, Jared underscore Tim. You can follow Derek on Twitter at DC Apollo. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.